Cheers. Welcome to the Mester Syndicate then in North Lincolnshire. This is one of two different syndicate waters that I've joined this year, which is 2013. The other venue that I've joined is, is Worldview, which we'll take a look at in another video. But for the time being, this is the, the water that I've been fishing mainly during, well, the middle part of May through to what is now the middle part of June. It's an absolutely beautiful venue, as you can see. I mean, it's, uh, it's now the 13th of June and looking at those trees and the reed beds and the fields around it really is a mature venue very very stunning uh, nice to fish as well very scenic very quiet well off the beaten track and there's a few stunning carp in here as well now my main target for the year is a fish that's been called cut tail uh, it is quite a, a known bait eater it does get caught quite a lot it was caught 10 times last year i think and around about the same sort of amount of times the year before so it's known for its frequent visits to the bank up till now it hasn't actually been caught this year so I'm a little bit concerned about that um, but I've had some good fishing so far anyway and I've managed to catch the number two fish at 35.2 which is currently the biggest fish out of here this year as far as I'm aware anyway um, and then I've also had the number three fish which is a fish called blind die which is normally a 30 but I had it just just below that weight and the number four fish which is an absolutely stunning fish one that's known as drop tail linear which has made 30 in the past but with that one it's not really about um, the size of the fish it's more about what it looks like because it is in my mind anyway one of the best looking carp in this area now underneath the water you've got a lot of weed in here which is why there's nobody here at the present moment um, most of the times I've turned up during the last three or four weeks whilst I've been a member um, I wouldn't say it's been rammed but it's been quite busy um, the last couple of three visits it's quieting down a little bit and I pr um, I'm presuming that that's probably because there's a lot of weed about chuck a marker float out and it really is difficult to find a clear area so you need a bit of confidence to fish on a water like this but there are some stunning fish to go for there's not only the big one but there's some really nice heavily scaled mirrors some classic looking commons as well as a few zip linears as well but let's have a look at uh, some of the different spots around the lake as well as uh, some of the footage that I've compiled during the course of the last three or four weeks whilst I've been fishing on here because it really has been an enjoyable time okay so we were mid we're in the middle of uh, we're in the middle of May and been fishing on Worldview for the last few weeks and the big one out there got caught the other day at 37 so I thought right I'll get down to Mesters and have a look and uh, it's been quite busy on it to be fair the last few weeks when I've, I've turned up to have a look and stuff so I've not fished it um, I did manage two nights in April which didn't really get anything and didn't really see anything and then I turned up yesterday and saw one or two fish in the shallow end I nearly set up down there but decided that uh, I'd, uh, I'd come and have a look at this end because there's been one or two fish coming out from over here um, not sure the name of the swim I think it's the one that's to the left of the cabin anyway and as you can see there's a nice big bay opposite and there's been quite a few fish held up in that bay and the, the two going swims really have been this swim here and the one to my right which gives access to that uh, well, has a, a, which has access I should say to that bay over there and uh, got in here yesterday put a little bit of bait out, trickled some um, monster squid along those reeds and then at uh, 4 o'clock this morning got off the mark with a fish called the drop tail linear which cracking fish has done 30 by, by all accounts in the past but they spawned last week or the week before not sure when and uh, it weighed in at 27 but it was an absolutely stunning fish nice colours on it lovely big scales as well and then a short while later about an hour half an hour later had a nice little 18 pound common as well so lovely way to get off the mark at Mesters it's recording pal ok third night on Mant uh, it's not Mantis is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> third Mesters. night on Mesters and uh, got lucky with a couple of fish topped by this nice one which is weighed 27 um, I've not looked at the pictures yet but I'm pretty sure it's a fish that's called the drop scale drop tail drop tail yeah drop tail linear which is an absolutely lovely fish um, somebody's told me as well that it has made bigger weights before but uh, they spawned last week or the week before but uh, I'm still happy, still very happy lovely fish to catch on only my third night
already. What a lovely fish to catch. Our first, our first fish from the lake. You won't believe that this is the middle of May. Uh, absolutely crazy the weather at the moment. But I've got a fish called Blind Iron in the sack, or in the sling. Just weighed him, he's 28.12. And uh, done the photograph, so I'm going to let him go now. So let's just do a little bit of video of uh, watching him go. There he is, the old warrior. I think he's the third biggest fish in the lake. Absolutely well chuffed to have caught that fish. Lovely morning here today at Mesters, around about 4.30. Tipping down at the moment, and uh, I'm not too bothered though because the old mat's wet. I've got the sling in the margins. We've got the uh, second biggest fish in the lake in the sling. Absolutely buzzing at the moment because out of the top four I've had three so I've done really well, just not had the big girl yet. Um, hopefully that one will come sooner or later though. Um, around about 20 minutes or so ago, uh, left hand rod which is fished just tight to those reeds on the far bank. There's nobody in the left hand next door swim to me and normally that margin of reeds is theirs but uh, because there's nobody in there I've got a a rod nice and tight to there and it tightened up about half an hour or so ago and produced a fish that's called one peck which is a bit of a daft name really because the fish has actually got two pecks it's actually only got one pelvic fin so whoever's named it's uh, got it a little bit wrong there but I've done, done quite well today I've had three fish lost one uh, two little doubles as well one common and uh, one lovely stunning mirror um, I only really got the rods out in this swim at around about four o'clock is something like that. Uh, I spent the, the morning down in what's called the corral swim which is way on down there to the left. It was a nice warm day and there's a nice big plateau in front of there and I uh, thought they'd have a go there but didn't get anything. So then did a bit of stalking over in the reeds or the bay as you should call it on the far bank. There's no swim as such in that area and the fish do get in there and they're getting there to spawn and to sun themselves and there was quite a lot of fish in there today so did a little bit of stalking uh, didn't catch anything um, I could have caught something but there were only doubles in there and I didn't really fancy spooking the whole shoal I was, uh, it's one of those areas that when the fish get in there and they, just, they get spooked they, they go out of there so I was waiting for the big girls to get in there but um, didn't get one and then got into here and I've actually had takes on all three rods. Um, lost one on the right hand rod as well. That was the first take I had, which is about half an hour after I put them out. And then it's just gone progressively since there. Well, I'm sure you'll agree that that is absolutely stunning. It really is. It's uh, beginning of June, and it's probably around about five o'clock in the morning at the moment, and I've just had one, just a little common, and it's the second take that I've had during the night. Um, down at the bottom end at Mesters, right in the shallows, and arrived yesterday about six o'clock, seven o'clock, and uh, the normal sort of going swims, they're not really doing any fish at the moment, so, I thought I'd have a look at the other end of the lake and lo and behold there's quite a few fish down here so I um, fished the night and um, I had a take on my middle rod which is tied to the reeds on the far bank at about 11 o'clock last night and it uh, unfortunately shed the hook and I had a feeling that something else was going to happen and as I say um, a short while ago I had a little one, a little common, I think it's uh, spawned out because there was um, signs of a little bit of milt and stuff coming out of it and uh, it seemed to be a little bit empty, so uh, hopefully these fish have got the spawning out of the way. 
at the moment and uh, we're going to see him have a good old munch now. I've got a couple of days if needs be on the lake at the moment so uh, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty confident that something else is going to give before, uh, uh, before the midday when I'm going to start having a little look round. But I'm sure you'll agree that that is an absolutely stunning sight, it really is. It's a beautiful lake, this place. It really is. I've got the tips down, um, so the back rests at the back of the pod are uh, up in the air because there's a couple of swans doing the rounds and middle of the night and stuff. I don't want to pick those up, so I've got my tips just underneath the water, which keeps the line well down and it allows the swans to pick around in the margins close in. Um, last thing I want really is a take from a swan in the middle of the night, so uh, that's why they're like that, if you're wondering. So we're going to take a look at my setup then. Um, today I've only got two rods cast out, and the reason for that is that the area that I'm fishing to is quite small, so I don't want to sort of over overcrowd the swim with too many lines because it's quite a clear water and I'm a big believer that fish do spook on lines uh, especially the way that I fish because I do tight line. Now I've got two rods as I say these are the Nash NRXDs I've been using these now for two seasons and uh, I'm still on my first set so if you decide to go and spend a bit of money for a set of these rods which really are nice and they're custom made as well they do they do last a long, long time, so the money's well spent, and, and I fish quite a lot as well. Now the reels, these are the Fox FS12000Es. Again, I've been using these for around about two years. Very durable reels, and these are loaded with 15 pound hardcore, which is the Nash hardcore, the new line. And then I've got the Sirens, and I've got the Solar Butt Banger indicators. So as you can see, I'm pretty, pretty tight with those lines. They're only about 60, 70 yards out and I'm a big believer in tight lining. I do slack line, but only in the margins when I know that the sensitivity of the setup is going to be exactly as I like it, because if I was slack lining out at 60, 70 yards, believe me, if those fish pick up the bait, don't believe the nonsense that you get an indication straight away because you don't. And uh, anybody who tries that setup and tells you otherwise is lying, because the tighter the line, the better the sensitivity. Just ask me mate Rob Hughes, who does a lot of diving. So that's basically it. What I'll do now is uh, have a look at the rig that I've been using to catch some fish on this lake this year. So on to the all important business end then. That's uh, close up on the business end that I've been using at Mesters to catch all the carp that I have this year. Now, other than the main line, which as you saw earlier, the uh, spools are spooled up with the white hardcore from Nash. This is the brown hardcore from Nash. I'll just put that on here for the purposes of showing you the rig. But everything else is exactly as it is out in the water at the moment. Now we've got a, a weed safety lead clip there. This is one of the Nash ones which is purposely designed for using on waters like nesters where there's an awful lot of weed about. The lead easily comes off um, if you get stuck in any weed. The lead I'm using, that's just a dumpy pair, three ounces from Nash. And then the hook link, this is trigger link from Nash. I've just gone on to this this year. It's uh, the first year that I've been using this but I've got a lot of confidence in it. It's done really well. and. The hook, that's one of the Nash Fang X's. There's a close-up of the packaging that you'll you'll see in the shops. Again, this is another um, item that I've gone gone on to this year since I've gone on to the Nash stuff. Got a lot of confidence in it. Fantastic hooks staying once they're hooked. And as you can see, I've got an Otlas knot with a little liner liner. Now the little bit of tubing that's there, that's just pushed over the, um, the eye of the hook. It's not only there just to to uh, create the line line, it's also there to protect me not as well. Now, the hook bait, every single fish that I've caught from Mesters this year has come on a standard bottom bait that's come straight out of the bag. There's no fancy gadgets, there's no cork wall pop-up or uh, uh, insert in there to balance it all out, it's just straight out of the bag. And as you can see, I've got quite a tight hair that's just the way that I like it when I'm using my rigs and it's the way that I've fished for 20 years now, nice and tight and I'll probably keep fishing like it as well for another 20 years no matter how many articles you see written from different people um, rigs is all about being confident because if you're sitting there and you're not confident you'll faff around with it and I'm confident of this rig, I've used it all over the world to catch all sizes of different carp and it works extremely well 
as indeed has proved this year um, on Messers because I've had three of the big ones, three of the top four big ones, and all of them have come on the uh, Monster Squid Black as well, which is what you're looking at. I have had the odd fish on the Scopex Squid, but because we've got a lot of bird life on this prob on this water and there's a, uh, it's quite a shallow venue as well. Um, the Monster Squid Black has certainly helped uh, to keep them things at bay. But we're still waiting for that big one to come out. He hasn't fallen yet to, to that bait. He hasn't fallen yet to anybody this year. Um, it is a little bit concerning. And as I said earlier, I've got... Well, I don't know if I said it earlier. I certainly said it earlier to the camera. I don't know if I've used that piece of footage. But um, we're now in the middle part of June. And I've got other tickets that I want to fish this year. I've spent the last month on Mesters and had a really good time. I've really enjoyed it. I've caught some lovely fish. Um, I've had the biggest fish out of the lake so far, which is one pick, which was 35-2. Now, the big in it hasn't fallen to anybody's rods yet. It was last caught in October. Last year it was caught 10 times. The year before that it was caught about 10 times as well. So I'm a little bit concerned about whether he's, he's still in here or not. Of course he could easily be playing hard to get this year. He could, uh, could have been lost a couple of times and might trip up tonight, might trip up tomorrow. But I've got to make an educated guess of whether I'm going to carry on fishing for him. So I'm going to do tonight and then uh, as of um, next week when I start fishing again I'm going to move to somewhere else and have a little go on somewhere else and wait for somebody else to, to catch this big one. And once they do I'm going to come back down here and have a go. But uh, I can't afford to be fishing for a, a fish that's potentially missing. Um, he's not been stolen, I know that. He's, he's either playing hard to get or he's sadly passed away during the winter time. Now he wasn't looking particularly healthy last year, he did put on about eight pounds um, during the course of the year and he was also seen in the winter on his own sat in what I would call a, a quite a strange place to be sitting which is in uh, only a foot of water in one of the shallow bays. So because he hasn't been out um, I am starting to think in my own mind possibly we might be looking at that fish having gone to the, the carp lake in the sky. Hopefully he hasn't and as I say if somebody uh, is fortunate enough to catch him over the next few weeks. I'll soon be back down here to have a go. But uh, if they don't, I've definitely enjoyed my season on Mesters or my time on Mesters so far. It's been really enjoyable. Um, I'll either come back and have another look at it during the course of the, the year. If not, uh, my next blog, my next video blog that I'll be doing will be about another venue. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed what I've talked about during the course of the, the last few minutes. And I hope you've enjoyed looking at Mesters because it really is a cracking venue.